Hello everyone and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about query strings. Now in the last video I kind of lied to you a little bit but I promise it was for your own good. When I was talking about passing class data or class objects uh, from a form on your HTML code to the model or to uh, through the model binding to the parameter on your methods on your controllers. I was saying that that was pretty much only going to go through the body of your HTTP request. And that's typically what's going to happen whenever you're going to use a, uh, a, a form on a web page you're typically going to use a post action which puts the values in the body of an HTTP request. But there is an alternative way that actually passes the data along in the URL, and that method is called a query string. So a query string is a part of a URL that contains data, and it's indicated or it's started by a question mark and everything that follows the question mark will then be part of that query string. Now query strings are comprised of value pairs and value pairs contain a name equals and a value. So the name of the property or the name of the value and then equals the actual value. Now each value pair is then separated with an ampersand. So you can include multiple value pairs inside of your query string. Now the first value pair is not going to start off with an ampersand. It's just going to come immediately after the question mark. So a typical query string would look something like this. We have our full URL here where we have our local host, which is the host that's hosting our web application. We have the port number 52577. We have home, which is a reference to the controller, then index, which is the action, followed by this question mark. And that question mark indicates that everything following it is going to be a query string. And the first thing that we see after this question mark is ID equals three, which is our first value pair. The name of the value is ID and the actual value is three. So we're setting ID equals to three. Then immediately after ID equals three, we have an ampersand. And we have another one further on down the line in the query string. This indicates that we have another value pair coming up. So between these ampersands then, we have more value pairs. So we actually have three value pairs being passed along in this query string. We have ID equals three, first name equals Linda, and last name equals Strauss. And you'll notice that this follows the same type of uh, identification that we had for our contact class where we had an ID property, a first name property, and a last name property. So I think you can begin to see the connection here. And MVC model binding will take a look at the value pair name and be able to associate that then with the property name of the class that you were model binding to. Let's get a good look at this in Visual Studio, as well as an idea of how we can use it in our MVC application. So to set up this demonstration, I'm first going to go ahead and comment out our two attributes here, the HTTP GET and HTTP POST from our two index methods. And I'm going to rename this index method that will show the form. And I'm going to actually rename it to index with form. And I'm going to leave this one just index. OK, so we have index with form and index. Let's go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go to the index with form uh, view. And on the form, I'm going to change the method from post to get. OK, so we're changing the form method from post to get. And remember, the post method took the values from our different inputs here and inserted them into the body of our request. OK, with the HTTP method get. So the action verb is get things are going to be a little bit differently. Uh, are going to work a little differently. So let's go ahead and save this and run our application. OK, so at first, since the default, the default routing is to go to our home index action, that means that it's going to land on this index action. And even though we're not passing any data into it, the uh, it's going to go ahead and create and instantiate a, 
uh, a contact class called contact and set the default values on that property on each one of the properties of our contact so id since it's an integer its default is zero and the default for first name and last name is both null so we do get a class uh, a class object called contact in our home controller index action and that is getting passed along to our uh, our home index view model and then that of course gets passed along to our view and so that's how come we get high there and then nothing your id is zero now let's go to the home controller index with form action so we have our form here and we can go ahead and fill out this information i'm just going to go ahead and do 200 as the id and we'll do linda Smith. Now let's go ahead and click on the submit button and watch carefully at what happens. So we do get the result that we expected in the body of our HTTP view. So we have hi there, Linda Smith, your ID is 200. You work for the company. So the data clearly got passed along from our form to this view. But you'll notice here up in the URL that we did get a slightly different URL. We now have after index this question mark ID equals 200 ampersand first name equals Linda ampersand last name equals Smith. So we are actually passing along the form data in the URL as a part of a query string and MVC model binding is smart enough to pick up on the fact that the data is contained in this URL as a query string and is not part of the body of our HTTP request. Now, just to show you this, if I take, uh, if I go back to the form and I'm just going to say Smith Wheeler. So let's just say that it's, uh, we have a space here between the last name. So Smith Wheeler. So Linda Smith Wheeler, we click on submit. And if we look up in the URL, we can see that it takes and combines Smith and Wheeler uh, and the space has been replaced with a plus sign. But it still shows up just fine here and our model binding has removed the plus sign and actually replaced it with a, uh, a space. So it appears correctly here on our view. So even though MVC is very intelligent, it's able to detect the uh, the values to be placed into this contact class by either URL or by the body of the uh, of the HTTP request, you can actually be very specific. I'm going to go right here into my contact parameter here, and I'm going to put an attribute on this uh, on this parameter, and I'm going to say from query. And this will specify that I am only going to get this contact if it comes from the query string of the URL. So let's go ahead and save this and run this. So if I go home index, and I'm just going to do question mark ID equals, uh, let's do 22. And first name equals Linda and last name equals Thompson and I hit enter we can see that we get Linda Thompson your ID is 22 but if I change this I'm going to close this out and I'm going to change the form on our index with form back to a post action okay just so that we can kind of goof around with this stuff save that as a post action but remember my index says that I need to get it from the query string Okay, so we'll save that. We'll rerun our application. Now I'm going to go to home index with form. And remember, this is now going to use the post action verb. So we're going to say, uh, let's do 25 or 26. There we go. We'll do uh, Anita uh, Samson. Okay. And we'll click on submit. Now again, remember, this is going to use the post action verb. And you can see the result is that the data does not get passed in. So it still calls the index action, but this from query attribute means, means it's only going to look for that contact details in the query string 
of the URL. And since the, uh, the post action was passing it along in the body, it was not able to detect it. So lastly, I'm just going to show you one of the nice things that we do get about passing this type of information in the URL is if we do again, ID equals, I don't know, 45 and uh, first name equals Steve and last name equals Bishop. If I do this in the URL, I can actually go ahead and bookmark this in my favorites. And now I can just use the bookmarks to pull that information up every single time. So if I just go back to, uh, let's change this to Stan Smith. So we're changing this to Stan Smith. And we can see the result is either Stan Smith, your ID is 45. But now if I go to my bookmarks and just pull my bookmark up, the URL information is, is contained inside that bookmark. So I will consistently get the same result out of the, uh, the posting of the data in the URL uh, string query. So that's just one of the, probably the main benefit of passing data along in the URL is that it allows your users to actually uh, save the, this URL in their bookmarks. So there you go. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section of this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.